Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about biases. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, would you say that a bi the biases play a role in recruiting decisions, especially when two software engineer candidates seem to be equally good? Yep, I would say so. Uh, I've said this many times, guys, the recruitment process of IT is flawed and it's always going to be flawed just as there's no objective way for you to pick the best movie or the greatest singer of all time or all these sort of subjective things when humans sort of have a difference of opinion on what's going to be good, what's going to be bad, what's better, what's worse, etc, etc. It's the same thing with the recruitment process. And the this is one of the reasons why I tell people I try to tell people that usually it's a good idea for you to reflect a little bit on why you're getting rejected or if like uh, you know try to there's a what is it a saying try to meet reality on reality's terms so I spoke to not that long ago uh, I was uh, interviewing a junior candidate who had told me that uh, he had felt dissuaded because he had been he had sent out some 200 applications or something like that to various companies and he hadn't really got any you know he hadn't gotten any opportunities and so i said that the, the this is sort of the and i've told you the same thing guys like this is sort of the issue with it where it's an expert uh, field or like software development is an expert uh, profession where the value that you have towards to a company is usually only like it's only tangible after you have experience which causes that catch 10 22 you need experience in order to provide value but nobody wants you to give get, give you the experience because they want you to already have it that sort of loop right and so I said to him that uh, when you're sending out applications and you may not get a reply that's a that's the bias basically speaking uh, where people will not give you an interview simply because you don't have any experience and that's not necessarily something that has to do with you I mean you can't help the fact that you're not already something more advanced you have everybody starts somewhere right but then it, it's not just that then when you get into the interview when you're actually going to talk to some people there are biases there as well and each manager or each person who does the evaluation is going to have some bias in the more in the companies who try to mitigate this a little bit they usually have some type of balancing uh, they try to get more than one person doing the interview or like they have different processes and so forth to try to fight this a little bit but fundamentally it is still the opinion of whoever is doing the evaluation of you as a candidate who that's going to have the final say it's as I've said a hundred times, guys, the, the, there is no better measurement than the gut feeling of the person. Being data driven is something that informs our gut feeling, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to did you check the arbitrary boxes that they have decided upon that mean something to the to the company and did you give a good, a good gut feeling to the people that you were talking to because there are plenty of cases where like exceptions are made or so forth and so forth and some people get excluded because they have a bad attitude and like so forth and so forth because uh, well well if you think about it yourself it's the same thing most likely that you are doing in many cases if you're really honest with yourself when you're picking your favorite restaurant or you're picking a specific thing and so forth a lot of it is down to like this intangible sensation that you have of this is good or this is bad and it's your down to your value system and so there's really no way for you to uh, to get around this bias thing where as i've said uh, guys before uh, the best investment for you when you're doing software like uh, when you're interviewing for a position is to understand what mo what what is desirable 
from the perspective of the companies and usually it's the same deal right your your you sh your bet should be as i've said a hundred times before guys your bet should be on the main stuff like the core skills your social skills all of these sorts of things because it's the it may not be perfect for every position but on average it's going to be the best investment for you such as you know it's basically it's better for you usually to bet on what is uh, common rather than what is an outlier of something because your average is going to be better if you go through enough of this uh, like of whatever you're doing and doing recruit like uh, recruitment processes and talking to companies and so forth is no different because it comes down to in this case uh, understanding what most companies are looking for in their candidates and trying to trying i mean you can try to do go your own way and uh, you know which you know the specific candidate did of course by explaining that you know this felt unfair etc etc and i sit there and this is an interview and i you know i can only nod and say yeah it is unfair but the reality is that i'm not here to debate with you over the unfairness of biases and stuff like that i'm here to do an evaluation of you uh, as a potential hire and the fact that you are showing frustration and you're actually telling me that yeah you've been failing over and over like i know that just sending out an, an application isn't like the end of the world but then when i get to talk to you i start seeing why most likely you're not getting any further because the the reality is that even like which is of course difficult to uh, to explain but the reality is that even at a ju in this case it was a junior software developer i can tell that you have quite some learning left to do so if you're convincing yourself that this bias is the only thing that affects your uh, hireability then you're sorely mistaken guys biases do play a part but don't do this thing that some people do where like they just say that oh this person is clearly an idiot or this person is a racist or this is a uh, this person is like an elitist or something like that because biases yeah there are absolutely people who are extreme who are like take these things to the far edges of things and like just basically go on what their own value system is but uh, it's not a good bet for you to get into the space of yeah i'm a victim because the system is so unfair uh, because on average guys most people have some biases but people always 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 can uh, like appreciate the value of someone who can bring, bring results and actually meets the criteria of what most people consider to be important in whatever they're doing and that is especially true for software development if you have strong tech skills and you're very talented and so forth even if you're a junior software developer i can guarantee you that the bias will play it will play in your favor rather if you actually know what people are looking for so what i want you to take away from this is that biases are a fact and all they're always going to be a fact in basically anything we people uh, we humans do because we are emotional and we have experiences and all this good stuff and this is no different for you when you're being picked as a candidate for a job or something like that and you mean it doesn't have to be a pick between two software developers it can be on every single meeting you go to if you are one of those software like I, my, I had a co-worker who asked me a very very good question which sort of captures this exactly he asked me uh, this was for a while back for a front-end position he said are you a front-end heavy like a ui heavy front-end developer or back-end heavy front-end developer basically he's trying to explain that there are usually two types of front-end developers either the ones that are really good with ui and ux and experiences and stuff like that but they're usually lighter on the engineering side and then you have people who are more like me for example who are more technically inclined and have a stronger understanding of like all the things like different ways of engineering and so forth that can build interfaces and so forth but i'm not as into like the ui ux stuff right and it that nuance was very i think was very much described the bias thing because if you talk to and this is why we try to diverse the opinions usually i, I try to promote that in my company at the very least because if i ask you questions related to technology then i because i have a certain bias for the things that i believe that say in this case a front-end developer needs to know 
I will ask you certain questions and feel different. Uh, you know, if uh, you don't answer, ask, answer them to my satisfaction, I'm going to have one reaction. Whereas my other coworker who is more UI related will have another reaction. But at the end of the day, that is, you know, that's how we are. You know, we, we try to be the best evaluators and as fair as possible. But everybody has a bias in some regard, and that's why I tell people that it's better for you to try to understand quote unquote your customer or the in this case the recruit like the people doing the interview and understand what is usually valued by the companies and bet on that if you really do well in those areas then you've done what you can because the rest of it is really down to dumb luck in many cases because in one company guys you might impress someone really really well because they have a bias that is in your favor and in another company you might do completely very poorly because you you're not your their bias is in a you know they're not putting you in favor uh, the thing that you should use as a measurement as i as i said is more the like how well are you doing on average because as i said you can always play the card the, like the play the victim card and say that nobody's giving me a chance etc 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 but the only thing that happens when you do that is that you're damaging your own chances of going further as with my ex my the person i spoke to the reality is that sure you can be frustrated and i understand that it sucks trust me i know very well how much this uh, this thing can suck but the reality is that you you're going to stay in that position if you get into a habit of having an excuse for trying to be better than you are. Because as I said, guys, biases work both ways. But if they're always not in your favor, then it's more likely that something else is going on than that people are just dismissing you based on some arbitrary thing. Have a great day.